Hello, my name is Eileen Alduenda. My name is Elise Everhard. I'm Marilee Sanchez. And I'm the Executive Director of the Council for Watershed Health. The Senior Scientist at Council for Watershed Health. I am the GIS Analyst and Digital Communications Lead for Council for Watershed Health. The Council for Watershed Health is a nonprofit organization founded 25 years ago by Dorothy Green. And our mission is to advance the health of our region's watersheds, rivers, streams, and habitats, both in natural areas and urban neighborhoods. We do this through science-based research, education, and inclusive stakeholder engagement. As the Executive Director, I work with our Board of Directors to align our programs and initiatives with our mission, and I direct our talented staff who have a range of backgrounds and a variety of skills and expertise in the fields of geography, ecology, landscape architecture, planning, urban forestry, social work, and community engagement, to name a few. Together, our diverse set of personal and professional experiences allows us to work towards a more sustainable watershed and provide diverse perspectives to watershed issues. The work that I do at Council is focused on monitoring and applied research projects. One of the projects that I manage is the project that you all are contributing to, and it falls within this larger umbrella of understanding the health of our streams and rivers in the San Gabriel and Los Angeles River watershed. And so the data that we collect helps us understand the extent of, of contamination, which includes trash, how healthy the habitat is, and whether a specific stream or river can support the uses that local communities and regulatory agencies assigned to it. Like many of us, my path for the work I do took many twists and turns until I found my way to the Council for Watershed Health. At one point on my path, I was working on energy and water resource management programs, and that led to an interest in sustainable community design and development, as well as community engagement in these processes. And the sustainable community projects I was working on often included the design of rainwater harvesting systems that created native plant habitats that connected communities to their natural and cultural heritage. My interest in designing urban landscapes to capture and use the rain beneficially led to my pursuit of a graduate degree in landscape architecture. That's where I focused on urban ecological processes for managing stormwater with community and watershed benefits in mind. And that's the work that we've been doing here at the Council for Watershed Health. I've been with the Council for 12 years now, and it's been exciting to be part of so many different projects and to see how our work has informed practices and policies that have helped to improve the health of our watersheds and our communities. What inspired me to be an environmental scientist and to do the work that I do is, I guess, firstly, my love for science. I've always loved learning about the complexity of life and was drawn to environmental science because of, of the way that environmental issues impact human communities, and I continue to learn more about that every day. And one of my favorite parts about science is, is learning how to answer questions about the world in a way that's rigorous and repeatable. And so after I finished school, I came to work at a nonprofit, um, which is the Council for Watershed Health, because I wanted to do science and I wanted to do research that could be applied to my local community to sort of understand some of the challenges and some of the solutions um, to, to the issues that are region faces and many of those have been focused around water quality and some of the, the water challenges that we face because we live in, in such a dry region. GIS is interesting because it allows us to digitally represent our environment and its characteristics which makes it a fun tool to see the world. Layer upon layer of spatial information can spark new questions and prompt geospatial analysis to find important answers. GIS can also model phenomena in the environment, such as rainfall, by predicting missing values for a more comprehensive understanding. By examining the where of any problem, resources can be best managed for greater impacts. Data-driven projects that incorporate GIS and maps become powerful when a large-scale issue can be quantified and visualized. Communities can participate in data collection to help scientists and policymakers understand the extent of a particular phenomenon. In this case, we are concerned with the presence and types of trash throughout our watersheds. Pasadena City College students are helping us to document this problem in a way that can lead to actionable solutions to mitigate waste in our streets. 
your data is going to contribute to the work that we do and, and the way that sort of data generally it helps us understand the world a little bit better we can understand the extent of an issue we can raise awareness around an issue and it can help us advocate for change and, and, and specifically for policy changes and can also help us track how effective those policies have been the work that you're doing with us contributes to that data. And I thank you for your work and for your contribution in helping us create healthier watersheds and healthy communities. And I look forward to seeing you at one of our future events. Thank you.